The Proton X70 is no spring chicken. It's definitely not a new car by now. I should know because I bought one at its initial launch and my own X70 is now four years old. This, however, isn't my own car because this is the latest version for 2022 and 23. And tell you what, it may look exactly the same as the original version, but Proton over the years have made a lot of small changes to make it overall a much better car than it once was. It's not perfect of course, far from it, which I will cover in this video. But if you're looking for an SUV in this price range and in this class, I think the X70 should still be at the top of your list. I'll tell you why in this video right now. Let's begin with prices. The Proton X70 now starts from just under 99,000 ringgit, going all the way up to 129,000 ringgit. To most Malaysians, that is a lot of money, too much money to spend on a car with a Proton badge. And I get it, brands matter. As soon as you get past the 100,000 ringgit mark, most Malaysians will be looking at Toyotas, Hondas, and so on. But to dismiss the X70 just because it has a Proton badge, I think is going to be a big mistake. If you're not thinking of a Proton at all, your next obvious choice would naturally be a Honda. A Honda HRV, the spec you'd want, a Turbo V would cost you 135,000 ringgit, already more expensive than this. And that gets you a car that is much smaller, more comparable to an X50, let alone an X70. To get a Honda in this size, you gotta go for a CRV. And again, the one you'd want is 170,000 ringgit. That is 40, 50,000 ringgit more than this X70 right here. Now, I know brands count for a lot, but 40, 50,000 ringgit more, yeah, I don't think it's worth that much. This here is a 1.5 premium, which I think is the pick of the bunch in the X70 range. You get the newer, more advanced 1.5 litre engine, which having driven it for a while, I really do prefer over the older 1.8. I'll tell you specifically why later on in this video. But for now, if you're looking for an X70, I really do think you're just better off saving some money getting this version instead. Moving on to looks, well, there's not really much to say at all here because it looks nearly identical to the car that was launched four years ago. The 2020 CKD update brought in the newer round Proton logos all around, while the 2022 update brings in more gloss black highlights all around the car. Having said that, I really do like the new 19-inch wheel design on this car. Parked side by side next to my old car, I think this one looks better, looks classier, premium even. But overall, there's just no escaping the fact that this just isn't a fresh design anymore. It's four years old in Malaysia and back in its home country in China, it's been around for much longer than that even. It doesn't help that we also have the X50 now, which looks far more modern. So in comparison, this looks like the much older design, which yeah, it is. But I will say this, the X70 is supposed to appeal to a more mature, more upmarket, classier set of customers. And if that's the target, they've achieved this with this look. Add to that the fact that most of its closest competitors, the Honda CRV, the Mazda CX-5, look pretty much the same now as they did back four years ago. So it's not like the Proton is being left behind in its own class. And it's much the same story inside. If anything, Proton has put even less effort in here to refashion it over the years. Compared to my own four-year-old X70, the only two things that are different on this car is the round Proton logo and this updated gear lever to go along with the new 7DCT transmission. The rest of it is exactly the same as before and I have to say it hasn't aged as well as the exterior has. But having said that, the very things that jumped out to me the most when I first got into the car four years ago, the plush soft touch materials at the top, the luxurious Nappa leather on the seats, they are still as good today. The leather, for instance, I've mentioned before that they are better quality than in my old Mercedes Benzes. Now that I've changed to a Range Rover, this is still better quality leather than I have now. How cool is that? So while the interior design game has definitely moved forward over the last four years, you can think of Proton's own X50, Honda's new HRV. In terms of quality and feel, this is still ahead of the game. For the new update, I had expected Proton to install the newer widescreen display that is available in China. 
but what we get is the same smaller screen as before which is yeah doesn't look as good does it but surprisingly Proton has even updated the car further on as part of a running change so if you were to get a brand new X70 today you'd get a slightly different hit unit with an Atlas OS instead that has brought on onboard Spotify support to the system replacing the old Jukes which is definitely a good thing more in line with what Malaysian customers expect of course a further upgrade to include Apple CarPlay or Android Auto would be much much more appreciated but those don't appear to be on the cards at all for the X70 for now. You may think that Protoa has overtaken Proton in this department with the latest Alza having Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. But the early adopters of the Alza are now struggling, are now suffering with faulty head units. So rushing forward, being the first to do something may not necessarily be a good thing. What is definitely a good thing is the 360 degree camera on this car. Even four years on, this is still one of the best systems of its kind. It's so clear, it's so sharp, it's even better than most cars three times, four times the price of this. What's not so good however is the audio system. Now it may have Kenwood logos plastered all around the speaker grills plus a subwoofer under the boot floor but they just don't sound as good as you'd expect them to. For rear passengers, the Proton X70 is just excellent. Just look at the amount of legroom and headroom that I have. I am only 167 centimeters tall, but even if you're much, much taller than me, you will be able to sit in the back here in full comfort, no problems at all. And then you've got the seats themselves, full Nappa leather, super soft, very luxurious. And the shape itself is just nice and supportive. Now compared to the original X70, you can now recline the rear seats a bit more for a slightly more comfortable position for longer journeys. Again, a nice improvement that they've made along the way. This I think is a genuine upgrade for those of you who are even driving D-segment sedans from before. This offers a lot of space, a lot of comfort and even the feel of quality in the back here is top notch. Unlike a lot of other SUVs including the X50 and the HRV where the top of the door cart is hard in the back here, this over here is as soft in the back as it is on the front. It feels very much high quality wherever you sit in this car. A big change for the 2022 update is the full black headlining. Now, usually with this change, I would say that the car feels a little bit darker, less airy compared to before. But with this car's large windows all around, that's not a problem at all. If anything, it adds a touch of classiness to this cabin. One thing I want to mention is the lack of a sunroof on this 1.5 litre premium variant that is now exclusive to the 1.8 premium. Now to me, you know I'm not a big fan of sunroofs and in four years of driving the X70, I think I've only used the sunroof like once or twice ever. So not having it here, I think is a good thing. That to me is another reason for you to get the 1.5 instead of the more expensive 1.8. That sunroof is just wasteful here in Malaysian weather. Together with the reclinable rear seats, Proton has also redesigned the tonneau cover to now include railings. Now, this is an improvement that is now rolled out to Geely models in China as well. So you know the technology transfer goes both ways in this relationship. That's something Proton can be proud of for sure. As for the boot itself, it's of a decent size of 400 liters, although it can be a little bit shallow for taller items. Compared to the original version, X70 now has a powered tailgate and a kick sensor. This is again something that they added on based on customer feedback and comments. Now finally on the move, this is where I thought the X70 was the most impressive to begin with. Now let's talk about the engine, but there's a lot of things to cover, so let's begin from the launch itself. This car was launched in 2018 with a 1.8 litre four-cylinder turbo engine with a six-speed automatic transmission from DSi. The 1.8 litre engine is Geely's own design and the six-speed automatic was from a company that was owned by Geely at the time. Now that made 184 PS and 285 Newton meters of torque. Now this was to me a very good combination. It was smooth, it was torquey, it was fairly powerful enough, although not that outstanding in terms of absolute performance, I would say. 
the transmission was actually quite smooth in my opinion but over the years it has developed quite a few issues among customers here in Malaysia although on my own car with the original six-speed automatic I've had no issues with it so far touch wood Moving on to 2020, Proton introduced the brand new 7-speed dual-clutch transmission to the X70. This replaced the old torque converter and this unit is co-developed with Volvo. In fact, a few Volvo models use the exact same transmission as well. This was obviously big news for a Proton to share the same hardware as a Volvo. The change in transmission allowed the engine to offer a bit more torque, now up to 300 Newton meters of torque. So overall the car was quite a bit faster than before, a full second quicker from 0 to 100 down to 9.5 seconds. But the bigger improvement was in terms of fuel economy. The original X70 wasn't great on fuel given that it's such a big and heavy SUV. So on my own car I've averaged around 10 litres per 100, that's over normal driving mostly in town. Now, the 2020 update with the 7-speed DCT brought it down by a full 13%. That is quite a big upgrade. Now, for 2022, we now have a brand new engine. So, out went the old 1.8-litre 4-cylinder turbo. In comes a new 1.5-litre 3-cylinder turbocharged engine. Now, this is co-developed with Volvo. So, along with the transmission, you now have a complete powertrain package that is shared between a Proton and a Volvo. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about it because, well, sharing technologies is common in the automotive industry, but the fact that the engine is now also made in Malaysia is something that we can be truly proud of. Proton's Tanjung Malim plant has been injected by a 1.8 billion investment by Proton and Geely. So that is a big step forward for local car industry and it spurs on local employment as well. So yeah, definitely a good thing if you ask me. Back to the engine itself, this makes 177 PS and 255 Newton meters of torque. It's the exact same tuning as on the flagship Proton X50. So in terms of numbers, that is a slight downgrade compared to the 1.8 turbo. Power has gone down by 7 PS, while torque has gone down by a significant 45 Newton meters. But against the clock, this is very nearly as quick as the 1.8 turbo at 9.7 seconds, just 0.2 seconds behind the 1.8. Behind the wheel, you will not feel the difference in terms of power at all. They feel pretty much the same to me. Now, in fact, for regular driving, I do feel like the 1.5 here feels a bit more energetic, a bit less lazy to start off from a stop. This is because with a smaller engine, the turbo works differently as well. So there's a bit less turbo lag on this smaller engine. Now this is proven by the fact that the peak torque is delivered at a much lower rev range compared to the 1.8. So as soon as you come off a complete stop, the engine can deliver peak torque, peak power for you to enjoy. Another benefit of having a smaller engine is the fuel consumption, of course. Now, Proton claims that this is a further 7% better compared to 1.8 turbo. So if you add that to the original 13% improvement from the original version, this is over 20% better overall. That is a massive difference. So say in the old car, you do a lot of mileage, you spend 100 ringgit in fuel every week. With this new version, you'll spend 80 ringgit over a month. Instead of spending 400, you spend closer to 300. That is quite a big saving through the years. So in four short years, while the car may look exactly the same on the outside, on the inside, under the skin, everything has been changed. The engine is new, the transmission is new. So despite this car looking the same on the outside, behind the scenes, I think Proton has put in a lot of impressive work to keep this car competitive over the years. So those of you who have been following automotive news very closely would have known that in China, this engine has been discontinued, replaced by a newer 1.5-litre four-cylinder engine. So from there, you might just think that China is just dumping old tech, outdated engines to Malaysia as a dumping ground. 
but that's not necessarily true. The change from a three-cylinder to a four-cylinder engine in China is mostly down to customer feedback and the lack of acceptance of a three-cylinder engine. Here in Malaysia, we don't have that issue and it's the same with Europe as well. In markets where that's not such a big issue, including Malaysia, it will just continue on with the three-cylinder engine. Even over in Europe, Volvo is not going to change to the newer four-cylinder engine. It's keeping with the three-cylinder engine. It's not true that we are getting old tech. We are just getting dumped with old engines. Not true at all. We are getting a current a Euro standard engine in our Protons here. As for why I said I prefer this 1.5 litre engine over the 1.8, well, the fuel consumption figure is actually quite impressive. Over two weeks of driving this car, I've averaged around 8.5 litres per 100 kilometres. That is quite a significant improvement over my old 1.8 litre engine. Like I said, I've averaged around 10 in that car. And then when it comes to driving feel, there really isn't that big of a difference between the two cars at all. Like I said, this one actually feels slightly perkier, slightly more eager to move from a standstill. I think that's a positive for the 1.5 as well. And I think in the long run, this is the engine that will be easier, more cost effective to run, to maintain over the years. Just think about it, Proton has already announced that this engine will be used across multiple Proton models over the next couple of years. So the new bigger X90 SUV, perhaps the smaller S50 sedan, that's all going to use the same 1.5 litre engine as this. So that is going to be the default engine for Proton models going forward. So later on in the future, once your car is out of warranty, I just think it's going to be easier, cheaper to find parts and workshops that are able to work on this 1.5 litre engine compared to the 1.8 litre engine. Now this is not something that's going to affect you right here and now, but those of you who think far to the future, yeah, I think this is the right decision to make now. Now on to refinement where a lot of people would have concerns over this being a three-cylinder engine and inherently unbalanced design compared to a smoother four-cylinder engine. Well, having driven the cars back to back, I don't really see that big of a difference at all. This 1.5 litre engine is just as quiet, just as smooth, just as refined as what I remember from the 1.8 litre engine. There is no downgrade in that sense either. Now, I have had a lot of experience driving this 1.5 litre engine in my own X50 as well. And over two years, I've had zero problems with it. So those of you who are outright dismissing this engine just because it's a three pot instead of a four pot, yeah, I think you gotta think again. Just go to a showroom, test drive one of these and I think you'll be sold on the new 3 pot engine. I'm sure of it. Next, let's talk about how this car handles because this being a big and tall, soft, cushy SUV, it's not the kind of car that you want to throw around corners. It's not that kind of Proton. But to me, that's not such a bad thing because this is an SUV. You're buying it to fit your whole family inside. You're buying it to be comfortable as you go on long journeys. If you buy it for outright fun to drive factor, you don't buy an SUV at all. You've bought the wrong car. Now compared to my original X70, this is very slightly better to drive. I think through big bumps and through sharp corners, there's a lot less body roll in this car. There's a bit more body control as well. There's a lot less bounciness as well. So I think they've tightened something up, made something a bit firmer here and there. And overall, it's a good step forward for the X70. Having spoken to a lot of chassis engineer, car engineers for brands like Toyota, Honda, Mazda and so on. A lot of them agree that the Malaysian car market is one of the hardest to get right because Malaysians just drive in a very weird manner. They are very aggressive, they have big power, big throttle inputs, big brakes and you've also got a wide range of roads as well. Big open highways where Malaysians drive super fast. 150, 160 easy, as well as terrible back roads with potholes, bumps and everything. So cars that are being sold here really have to prepare for the absolute worst road conditions. And this is precisely where I think Proton knows exactly how our local driving behaviour is, how our road conditions are, and they have perfectly managed to tune the suspension to suit our local roads. Even the way this car delivers power to what we've seen in China is a bit different. They've made the engine power delivery here a bit quicker, a bit sharper compared to 
what you'd see in China. There they prefer much lazier power delivery to fit their roads better, to feel more comfortable overall, whereas Malaysian drivers prefer much more direct, much more quicker response and we have it. I think this fits our roads much better. The comfort and refinement package offered on X70 today I think is the best in the class right now. The ride quality just feels so sophisticated, so controlled, so comfortable that I think nothing else comes close in the same class. The Honda CRV, for instance, is just nowhere near as comfortable as planted as this car is. And in terms of refinement, there's just such a big difference. The Honda is loud compared to this. And then you've got the Mazda CX-5, which in terms of absolute driving ability is slightly better than this. You can carve corners in more confidence in a Mazda CX-5, for instance. But in terms of ride quality, in terms of refinement, this is a hit. So yeah, overall, this is currently the best package in the class right now. You put all that together with the fantastic set of seats on this car, and for long distances, it really doesn't get much better than this, unless you buy a car that's, I don't know, double, triple the price. If you give me a Mercedes-Benz GLC, then yeah, that's a better car than this. But between this, a Honda CRV, Mazda CX-5, and so on, yeah, I drive this long distances any day of the week. If there is a complaint that I can level on this car, is the lack of more advanced driving assist systems. This car does have AEB, or Autonomous Emergency Braking, as well as Adaptive Cruise Control. Now, that is super impressive for years ago when the market has not really caught up to global markets, but now it absolutely has. Now even the MyV has a level 2 semi-autonomous driving, which this car does not have. The X70 does not have an active lane keep assist system, so it doesn't control the steering wheel to stay within the lane. There is no semi-autonomous driving feature at all. To me that's a bit shameful, where even within Proton's own range, the X50 has all those features, but the flagship X70 doesn't. Just goes to show how old this car really is. So overall, that's the one blip that I think this car has, but if you can forgive all that, it's such a fantastic car to drive, both for you and your passengers. So that's the Proton X70 for you. It looks the same both inside and out, which four years on is definitely a big disappointment. But at its core, this is still a very, very strong car underneath, especially in terms of comfort and refinement. It is the best in the class by far. Add to that all the small improvements that Proton has peppered around the entire car over the years, plus the new 1.5 litre engine, and this is without a doubt the best Proton X70 you can buy yet. Now, I remember saying specifically this all those years ago, even if this car was priced exactly the same as the Honda CRV, I would still choose the Proton X70. Would I say the same right here and now? Well, considering the Honda CRV is exactly the same as it was back then and now, Yep, my answer is still the same. The X70 remains the top choice in this class. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and stay safe everyone.